Campus Crusade for Christ was founded in 1951 at UCLA by Bill and Vonette Bright in order to help fulfill the Great Commission. They believed uh, that God had placed a unique burden on their hearts to live out the passage in Matthew 28, where Jesus said, Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I commanded you, and, lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. And so they had a desire to see that lived out, and they believed that college students were the key to reaching the world for Christ. In 1951, there were very few people working with college students or ministering to college students. Uh, all the churches were lining up to go into the prisons or into the soup kitchens, but nobody was working with college students. And so they started the ministry there at UCLA. But it wasn't just to reach students. They believed that if you reached the students of today, you would reach the world of tomorrow. And so they started the ministry there with the name Campus Crusade for Christ, but with a vision and a burden and a passion to see the whole world reached and to start ministries uh, across the spectrum of society. But from the very beginning, they knew they were going to have to change the name from Campus Crusade for Christ. The word campus limited the scope, and they knew that God's calling for them was much bigger than that. It was the whole world. And so in the United States today, we go by the name Crew in order to help us be more effective at giving every person a chance to know Christ. We're not just about students anymore, although that's still the largest part of our ministry. Uh, we have outreaches to all segments of society, and we are passionate about connecting people to Jesus Christ. Our objective is to give every person on the planet an opportunity to know Jesus Christ. We believe that people have a deep desire and a need to know who Jesus is, to experience the love and forgiveness that he offers to every person. And so our objective is to give every person everywhere that opportunity, that opportunity to hear a clear, relevant presentation of the good news about Jesus Christ in their own language and based on their own need and experience. We believe that people reject Christ primarily because of bad images that others uh, reflect on him. Maybe it was a bad experience in the church or with other Christians. What we desire to do is to help people know who Jesus really is and introduce them to the reality of his love for them. We do that by giving people opportunities to know Christ, winning them to Christ, building them in their faith, and then sending them out to do the same with others. I believe our greatest asset is the 13,000 full-time staff that we have on the ground in 150 nations around the world. They've already raised their financial support, they're already serving as missionaries here in the United States and all over the world, and they provide us an amazing opportunity to make a difference around the world. It's not only the 13,000 full-time staff that we have, but there are tens of thousands of other mobilized partners and volunteers that operate here in the United States and around the world. We give them the tools and the resources they need to make a difference in their part of the world. We truly believe uh, that every person can be a minister and that we can help them do that. Our organization has a wide variety of outreaches from reaching students to reaching people in the city, to reaching athletes, work with families, all of those serve as a great leverage point for us as an organization to reach people in all spectrum of society and to give them an opportunity to know Jesus Christ. The simple answer as to what makes our organization effective is that God is the one who makes us effective. Uh, it's our dependence upon him through his Holy Spirit our faith that he is the one who's going to work that is most important to us. One of our core values as an organization is faith, that we trust that God is going to work and that he's going to use us as he sees fit. Uh, ultimately, it's not about our abilities, our skills, our tools, or our resources. It's about God. And we want to trust him to provide us with what's necessary in order to be effective. We think that one of the things that helps us as we trust God to be more effective is our single-minded focus. That no matter what type of ministry we're doing, it's always about helping people have an opportunity to know Christ. 
Uh, we want to see them have the opportunity to know him, to be built in their faith, and then to make a difference in the world around them. The other thing that helps us be uh, effective as an organization is our staff and our partners. Uh, we have phenomenal staff who've given their whole lives uh, to make a difference. Uh, they raise their support. They go out as missionaries around the world uh, because they have a heart to help people know Christ. And it's the people who partner with us who also want to make a difference in the world around them. It's the scope and scale that we offer in terms of the whole world and a wide variety of ministries that no matter what your interest is in making a difference, we more than likely have a tool, a resource, or a ministry targeting that part of society. What we pay the most attention to has to do with how many people are we exposing to the truth and the grace of Jesus Christ and how many people are making decisions to place their trust in him. If our overall objective is to give every person on the planet an opportunity to know him, we measure uh, relentlessly how we're doing at that. How many people are being exposed to the gospel through all of our different strategies and how many people are making that decision to place their trust in him. Uh, as we go beyond that, we're also looking at the number of people that we're training, who've been trained, who are uh, understanding how they can make a difference in the world around them. Uh, we're never going to reach the world through our own efforts. It's only going to occur as we partner with other parts of the body of Christ, other Christian organizations, churches, lay people, students, uh, to help train them and equip them with the resources they need uh, to make a difference. So we look at the people that have been trained we also look at the number of people that are involved in small groups who are being discipled, who are seeing their lives transformed by the good news of Christ day in and day out, that they're growing in their faith and they're learning how they can make a difference. And then finally, uh, a key stat uh, for us is what we would call lifetime laborers. Who are those people that for the rest of their life have made a commitment uh, to make a difference wherever God places them? They don't have to join our staff. They don't have to volunteer with our organization. They can go into any part of the, uh, the world that they want to go in. But have they made that, that commitment and have that desire to make a difference for the rest of their lives? So we're constantly evaluating how are we doing at sending people out into all parts of the world and all parts of society. In addition to the breadth of ministry that we have, one of the misconceptions is that we're all about what we do as an organization. And in reality, uh, we have a kingdom perspective or a kingdom focus. It's not just about what we do or whether or not we get credit for something. We want to train and equip people to minister wherever God leads them with whatever part of the body of Christ that they're going to work in. So oftentimes you'll go into churches or in other organizations and you'll find leaders or pastors who at one point have their life touched by the ministry of Campus Crusade for Christ. And we're excited about the opportunity we have to be a resource generator for the body of Christ by providing leaders for other aspects of the ministry. Probably what we're most well known for is our innovation and evangelism. From the very beginning, uh, we have sought to create tools in evangelism that would help people know Christ. So way back in the 1950s, uh, Dr. Bright created a little booklet called The Four Spiritual Laws that's been printed in uh, hundreds and hundreds of languages around the world. Over five billion copies of that have been distributed around the world. Uh, and it really is what launched uh, other organizations into using evangelistic tools uh, in communicating the gospel. Another one that where we've been very effective is with uh, use of film. Uh, back in the late 70s, uh, we shot a full-length uh, motion picture called the Jesus Film, uh, and it was about the life of Christ, uh, and it was taken entirely from the book of Luke. And uh, that film has been translated into thousands of languages, has been shown to over 7 billion people around the world. Obviously, some people saw it twice. Uh, but it has been picked up and used by churches and other organizations around the world and maybe is the one tool that is, uh, we're most well known for around the world.
we also look to be uh, innovative in evangelism on the internet. Uh, our most popular site is everystudent.com, and it's where college students can go to have their questions answered. Uh, we have thousands, tens of thousands of students hit there every day uh, looking for answers, and there's all kinds of articles and information for them to uh, seek out and understand the claims of Christ or have their questions answered in the privacy of their own dorm room or apartment or wherever they happen to be. Uh, everystudent.com and everyperson.com have been used uh, and translated around the world uh, to be effective in helping people know Christ. We've also been effective at providing an ongoing flow of motivated Christ followers to the body of Christ, people who've been trained and who are motivated to go make a difference. We believe ultimately that you can minister and that we can help. And so we want to provide an ongoing flow of people who have been equipped to go make a difference wherever God has them. We've also been committed uh, to being culturally relevant over the decades. Uh, we're not sitting in an office waiting for people to come to us, but we want to figure out where people are living, what their needs are, and how do we take the good news of Christ to them where they are. It's been estimated today that 60% of adults in America would never willingly go to a Christian event. They've been turned off by the church or by other Christians, uh, and they tend to stay away. And yet, in the United States, most Christian organizations spend most of their time and energy going after the 40% who will come. We believe that it's that 60% that we have to continually figure out ways to be culturally relevant, how to connect to them with their needs, where they live, in a way that works for them. One of our challenges has been that we've been slow to transition from a staff-centered model of ministry to a partner or other-centered model of ministry. We have uh, often stayed more focused on what our staff do than on what we help other people do. We really believe that you can do it and we can help. And we are transitioning every part of our organization to do that more effectively. For instance, our Family Life Ministry over the years has held conferences all around the United States where people would come in for a marriage conference for the weekend. And that's worked great. It's been very effective. We'd see about 80,000 people a year come to those conferences. But if you want to get to every family in the United States, you have to have a model that's different than having people come in to an expensive weekend at a hotel. And so we've developed tools and resources so that we can put the content of that in the hands of individuals who can go out and lead their own mini marriage conference uh, in their own neighborhood. You can do it, we can help. And so we've made that transition. Uh, we've also been slow to uh, become effective in working in cities as well as we would like to. We have a wide variety of ministries in cities and uh, we are effective at some level, uh, but we haven't achieved the level of success that we want to. Uh, we want to become better able to minister in the cities at every level of society uh, across the ethnic uh, scene in order to reach every person with the good news of Jesus Christ. As an organization, we are global in nature in that we have ministries in 150 countries, but we're also local. We have 13,000 full-time staff uh, in those countries around the world ready to minister. All of our ministries are prepared to expand to move forward if we have more funding. And because we have a broad base of ministries, we're able to tailor what we do based on what donors are motivated to give to. Uh, we would seek to do what we do more effectively and more broadly. We would open more campuses. Uh, we would focus on reaching ethnic students uh, across the world and in the United States. Uh, we would try to be more effective in the cities as we would expand in the inner city uh, and throughout the city. Uh, we would look to ex take our family ministry resources and expand that around the world to provide resources to reach and minister to families. We'd be able to send uh, more athletic teams around the world to do evangelism using the platform of sports to make a difference. Uh, we would use the internet uh, to get the gospel out into more locations. One of the most effective ways to reach people in the Middle East is through the internet. 
there on the internet in the privacy of their own home, they can examine the claims of Christ and do the research that they need to do in order to understand the claims that he has and the difference that he can make in their lives. We would expand that. We would also be able to expand uh, the compassionate uh, deliveries that we do in the inner city and around the world through humanitarian aid. We're poised and ready to make a difference uh, and you can help. The main gap that we would seek to fill is uh, expanding across the offerings of ministries that we currently have and to do that more broadly. Uh, we would look to expand uh, the effective strategies that God has already given us and to take that more broadly around the world. Uh, in the United States, uh, we would look to uh, reach into the cities, uh, reach into the ethnic groups in order to be more effective there. Uh, we would also look to expand uh, in the internet to take uh, the gospel uh, into the virtual world and use the platform of the internet uh, and the digital media to take the gospel around the world. Uh, more funding would provide ministries with the opportunity to more quickly respond to the needs that come up uh, that they're faced with. 